Hey BioFans, it's Mr. Hajarian talking to you about biomolecules today. So, uh, as usual, I want you to have your skeleton notes out, be ready to take notes, and let's get started. So this first slide, um, this one's basically talking about the different elements that we have in our body and the percentage of them that we have. So you do not have to memorize these numbers, so please don't feel like you have to memorize 63% oxygen and whatnot. But basically, it's just kind of a fun fact telling you approximately what percentage of each oxygen of each element we have in our body and the human body is approximately 60 percent water okay let's move on and talk about carbon i get excited when i talk about carbon because it brings in some organic chemistry and i love organic chemistry so molecules that contain carbon are called organic molecules okay organic is anything any molecule that contains carbon don't mistake that with uh sort of the other term organic when we talk about you know buying organic foods or fruit that's really talking about how maybe it's not GMO uh, genetically modified or that it's not exposed to pesticides when we talk about organic here we're saying that it's a molecule that contains carbon each carbon atom forms four bonds and carbon can, can form single double or triple bonds so let's take a look at this first one right here ethane all right I want you to notice it has two carbons in there all right so I'll draw it up here it's got carbon carbon and then it's surrounded by lots of hydrogen so if you just focus on one of those carbons let's focus on this one right here what does it have it's got one bond two bond three bonds and then this would be the fourth bond right there so each carbon has four bonds uh, let's move our way down let's see here's propane butane two methyl propane let's go to one butene right here what I want you to look at is this first carbon right there it's got so we got a carbon we got hydrogen, we got hydrogen, there's nothing down here, and then we got a double bond to another carbon right there. So if you count the number of bonds, we got one, two, three, and four. Okay? And here's an example of a ring. So we got benzene right here and cyclohexane right there. Okay? Let's move on and talk about macromolecules. So those terms, macromolecules and biomolecules, they're gonna be used interchangeably. So if we say macromolecules, it's like saying biomolecules. So they're basically large or enormous molecules that often um, are called or are referred to as polymers. And polymers are made of many repeating units called monomers. So here's what I want you to picture. Imagine one piece of Lego, which I loved growing up. Here's a piece of Lego. All right, that's referred to as a monomer. Mono meaning one, okay? Now, if you put another piece of Lego next to that, now you got two pieces, what do we call that? We call that a dimer, D-I, so dimer. All right, now you get lots of pieces next to each other, and that's what we call polymer, poly meaning many pieces. So one of these pieces would be called a monomer. So there's a monomer, there's a monomer. Two pieces together are a dimer, and then you get three pieces or more, and those are referred to as polymers. All right, uh, let's see. Examples of macromolecules, plastics, but we'll be talking about specific types. Okay, so biomolecules are basically macromolecules used for life processes, and there are four main types that we're going to uh, talk about. So, first one, carbohydrates or carbs. Next one's lipids, fats and oils. Next one's nucleic acids, and then lastly, proteins. Okay, and these are basically the, the things that make up carbohydrates, sugars and starches, what makes up lipids or fats and oils, and so on. So here are some examples of carbohydrates, which I enjoy very much. I love bread, and who doesn't like pasta? Okay, so main energy source is carbohydrates. The monomer for carbohydrates is known as monosaccharides. Again, mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar. Okay, so that's the monomer for carbohydrates. So if you were to make a table and basically make monomers and polymers for each biomolecule for Carbohydrates, you write that monosaccharide as their monomer and polysaccharide as their polymer. So based on what you know about monosaccharide, what do you think polysaccharide means? Poly meaning many, saccharide meaning sugar, so many sugars. Okay, and again, these are some examples of carbohydrates. I'm wondering if you know why an apple would be an example of carbohydrates. An apple and bread, they taste very different. 
Um, usually bread and pasta come from the same source, but an apple doesn't. So think about why an apple would be considered a carbohydrate. Uh, big molecules like starch, glycogen, and cellulose. These are things that um, we will get into. Cellulose is a sugar. Anything that ends in O-S-E is going to be a sugar. Uh, we'll talk about glycogen a little later on. Um, and starch is basically long chains of carbohydrates. So starches here could be things like pasta or bread. Okay, lipids. Lipids can be very tasty, as you know. Things like butter. All right, so they store energy and make biological membranes. Uh, they're not composed of monomers. Uh, this is the part that might get kind of confusing, but basically lipids don't have monomers. Okay, instead, they have subunits. So instead of those Lego pieces we were talking about, where it's like one piece, another piece, another piece, and so on, these have subunits, which means like small pieces that come together to make a lipid. Uh, when we talk about lipids, we'll be referring to them as things like saturated, which means no double bonds, okay? So a saturated lipid, the word saturated means that it's saturated with hydrogens, lots of different hydrogen atoms. So um, you would basically have something like that, right? Lots of carbons, and then they're just packed, and all these lines I'm drawing are basically hydrogens. All of these are hydrogens, okay? So that would be saturated lipids. Unsaturated or polyunsaturated lipids are things that contain double or triple bonds. Okay, so again, a double bond, meaning that. So again, when you hear saturated, it's a lipid that's got all these carbons, and they all have single bonds. When you hear unsaturated, it's a carbon, and they have double bonds. Now, one thing I want you to start thinking about is what's the difference? Is it better or worse to eat saturated lipids versus unsaturated lipids? Next, proteins. All right, so where would you get proteins? Here are some examples. You got beans. Uh, nuts, eggs, uh, chicken, looks like beef, fish, lots of different examples. Okay, many functions. Uh, proteins basically make up our muscles, our hair, and they actually make up our enzymes and hormones. Okay, now remember, enzymes are protein based. The monomer for proteins is known as amino acid. That is the monomer. The polymer is basically called protein. That makes it easier to, to memorize and to know. And there are four levels of structure for proteins, which in one of the other lectures, Mr. Jones goes over. So we'll have um, primary, secondary, and so on. Okay, our next one on the list is nucleic acids. Okay, nucleic acids store genetic information. So what are we looking at on the right side over here? What is all this stuff? We're looking at DNA. Okay, the monomer for nucleic acids is known as a nucleotide. A nucleotide is composed of the following. It's got sugar, it's got a phosphate group, and it's got a nitrogen base. Okay, so here's how we're going to know those. I know this picture is kind of small, and we'll look at it bigger later on, but the phosphate group is right there. See that? That yellow P right there? Okay, that's the phosphate group. The sugar is basically this guy right there. That's our sugar, and our nitrogen base is right over here. So this entire thing right here, that is a nucleic acid. That is one nucleic acid. Or excuse me, that is one nucleotide that make up nucleic acids. Uh, the polymer for nucleic acids, again, kind of like proteins, it makes it easier. It's known as nucleic acid. So you have their monomers. So again, going back to those Lego pieces, you have one monomer and you put that together. These are my Lego pieces. Um, and together they make up the polymer, which in this case is known as nucleic acids. And examples of nucleic acids are DNA and RNA. And that's the end of that lecture. So make sure you're writing down all your questions and we'll see you in class.